totally confident. But before I get in the ring, I'm, I'm I might drop dead of a heart attack. And you know, I get panically, I panic before a fight. But this is what I know from experience. How though I'm afraid of my opponent, I found out he's more afraid of me than I am of him. And once I found that out, it was game over. Oh, that's so that's how I fear. Like that's how before. I know the power of fear and what it can do. It is never to be underestimated. And how do you how do you deal with the pressure? Because you know, when I say pressure, I'm not talking so much about the opponent, more more about the expectations. You know, because when you're the greatest, when you're number one, everyone expects you to win all the time, and this is the right, highest pressure possible in life. Right, you don't Pat, have the right check to this out, Pat. You know what pressure is? Pressure is not being hit. Pressure is the thought of being hit, and the thought of being hit is a million times worse than actually being hit. Um, and that's what pressure is. The thought of the thought of failing is pressure. I understand. Yeah, I mean, I think all the champions are are incredible in that. I mean, all the champions. There are not so many. <laughs> You're not so many. But uh, I mean, I, I can see it with Serena also because you know when you don't have the right to fail, it's the highest possible pressure also to exactly. to experience. But the best thing that can happen to a person like myself is that I do fail. Because by failing, it's going to allow me to ascend to the soul. The height that is so high that I can't even measure the length of it. My failures in my are my successes. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is a, a real, very interesting subject because you are the, the king of resilience, you know. Uh, I mean, you had ups that were incredibly up, downs that were incredibly down, but you always came back. And this is incredible. Now, I mean, you said in 2005 that your your life was a waste and you were a failure because you were going through a tough time. And 15 years after, you look so happy. You look much more mature, much more composed. You have a great family. Uh, you bring back a, a great um, business. I mean, that's incredible. You know, Patrick, you know, Patrick, in order to be a good entertainer, really, you got to be a good actor, too. That's what this is all about, entertainment. All sports, it's entertainment. It's all about entertainment. And sometimes you have to you have to make your own comeback. You have to kill yourself, make it appear that you're dead to set up for your your return. It's That's almost like one. the Count of Monte, like the Count of Monte Cristo. But that's a that's a good thing that you guys have in boxing we don't have in tennis so much. You know? You have this acting that you have in boxing that makes it no, so no. exciting. So you see um, John McEnroe, him, um, Jimmy Connors, those guys are entertainers. Yeah, but it's so You see how Serena is when she goes, yeah, yeah, that's what we want. We want to see YouTube that passion. We want to see they have what we have. Do they love, do they love this game yeah. as much as we love them? That's what it's all about. We want them to show, we want, them to, we want the fans, want people to show their love and appreciation. Yeah. yeah. And that's what the entertainers do. Yeah, Even if they talk to smack and all that, it's entertainment. Yeah, I, but I would, I would be very interesting also to understand how you find the resources to come back and come back so strong every time you come back. Well, you know, Patrick, um, I want to be up more than anybody wants to see me down. You know, that's the real deal. Oh, that's I, don't know, I don't know. I want to be up more than anybody in the world wants to see me down. Let's talk about comeback, coming back. So you just made a comeback now. Uh, you, yes. you you came back to the ring. And yes. first of all, thank you. Because for the thank fans, you, my thank the you. Fans, that was such an excitement. And I know you did incredibly well in the ratings. It was such a big success. Um, second, congratulations. Because th that was incredibly impressive. I, I mean, the, the transformation of your your body in the, the next the last year. To, to come back so strong was amazing to to witness. Well, you can see what they're dealing with um, um, Serena. That's a commitment with weight. You know what I mean? Just keep on being consistent. That's how she lost the weight. Consistency. Consistency, it kicks motivation that. Ah. Like it's your life. You do it like you're breathing every day, every day, this, this, this. 
that's when you become the best you can be. Every day, you got to do it like you're breathing and sleeping. So the, 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 the discipline that Cass taught you when you were young, you kept it. You still have it. Yes, it ignites every now and then. <laughs> when you decide, you are yes. like that. Yeah, Listen, okay. Thing. I learned um, impossible is nothing for someone who tries. So talking about your, your last fight, so just tell us a little bit about your what you created. You created something called... Uh, Legends only? only League. Yes, it's the Legends Only League. And it's really interesting because once I announced that I was going to do my exhibition, everybody, Jerry Rice, John Mines, all these other athletes, Floyd, they all want to get involved in some way. And our first, because our first show was a record breaker. And so now everybody's interested in being involved with us in our whole um, organization. So, how do you feel about being on the ring again after so long? It was interesting. I felt really good. I felt confident. I felt that I can do it again. So do you want to do it again? Yeah, absolutely. It'd be better this time. <laughs> That's a good news. Um, uh, so w what was your motivation to come back? Was it uh, this league that you created and you thought, this is I want to be the first one to, to start that league? Hey, it turned out that way. But... Um, My brother-in-law and my wife's brother came up to me and said, Mike, I ain't gonna ask you. The people want me to know, you want to fight again? I said, get the, I don't want to fight. It's not the who. Hey, I said, um, who do they want me to fight? And then he said, um, one minute. And he calls on, he said, Bob Sapp. I know Bob Sapp, he's a monster and stuff. I said, okay, well, how do, can I box him? Can I box him or how can, he said, okay. I said, ask him what he box me. And he said, you want to do Marcus the Queens? He said, yeah, and I said, I'll fight. And I don't know why that made me say that. And then it went from him to Tyson Fury to Shannon Briggs and then to Roy Jones. And that's how it started. So is it only about boxing or are you going to, because the no, idea is about being everybody. We got um, football, basketball, tennis, but the rules will be different. The, ten, the rules will be different. The tennis people won't be too um, stuffy. You'll be able to talk shit back and forth. You can break rackets. And you know, it's like freestyle. You can do everything but fight. Anything but fight. That's the only thing you can do. And because then they can see the passion of the players. And that's more exciting when you can see that passion. You know, that I agree. That passion you know, I agree with that. Huh? Contaminated, yes. The passion is, is so enthusiastic. People get, um, I don't know, they get mesmerized by it. And because you know, Mike, you know, people are watching sports to feel emotion. And you guys, sports people, are so passionate about what you're doing. So it's a way to share that emotion. If the players or the boxers are and the, and the tennis players are able to share that with the crowd, that's that's amazing. And that's the whole. You know, I agree with you, but you know what I realized about fans too. From my experience, they want to see you to go to the brink of destruction and come back. You know, somebody that destroyed their life and bring it back. That's an interesting person. Yeah, that's a great concept. Because sure. life is basically the willingness to die. And I believe um, the higher the, higher the risk, the higher the reward. And that's how my life functions. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about uh, tennis. Oh, right. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, Milan, so one of your children... Milan is playing, yeah. and she's yeah. she's a good she's a good tennis player, and she's uh, she's talented, and she's very motivated to become a, a professional. Um, so first, how, do, how much do you enjoy being a tennis dad? Listen, um, it brought my horizon, and I'm so uh, I've been so grateful I had the opportunity to be involved with guys like you and you meet everybody, and um, it changed our lives. No, our whole, our whole life has changed over tennis, and that's just hard to believe, you know. Um, I thought we were doing well and everything, and everything that we're doing, making money and everything, is not bigger than my daughter playing tennis. Can you imagine that? that she's bigger than everything in our life now. Yeah. Just because so why? Because you love that sport, or because you see her? Uh... No, I see her transcending into something that she never would have before. She never got involved with tennis. Okay. She has confidence. At ten, at eleven, twelve years old, she 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 has a great deal of confidence in herself. 
So, I mean, I think everyone wants to know what kind of, uh, of tennis father you are. So, are you uh, very invested in the training or only supporting her? Listen, I support her, and um, when she allows me to, I, I put her in the good training method. You know, sometimes um, I, I see her physically by nature. She's thinning, thinning down. She looks thinner and taller. But I guess I'm a strong believer in you putting it in every day, an hour or two every day before you start your day. Get two hours of cardio, hour and a half, and then your day starts. You got to win the morning in order to win the day. You know, you do win you, the morning, you got the day. Do you teach her discipline? Yes. I, I, she's disciplined on her own. You know, she gets up, she cooks her meals, she takes a shower, she goes right to the gym every day at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock. And she stays there till like, you may know, around 4 o'clock. And um, she's very um, diligent, and she, she wants to do this. I think... Something about this tennis gave her an ego. Somebody applauded her and said how nice she was, and now she dedicated her life to it. I'm very, I'm very proud to have somebody in my family understand that part of life where sometimes things don't go your way, and that's what life's about. It's not gonna go your way, but you have to handle your, you know, your situation, and your your misfortune, and that's what discipline does. You don't win every match, but you can learn and you can handle defeat better than you did if you were a sore loser. I'm not. I'm not a great. I used to be a great fan of sore losers, but they expose themselves as being sore losers. If you're a sore loser, but don't expose yourself as being one, then you're a great player. You have great control of your discipline. Did, uh, did that make sense? <laughs> yeah, completely, hundred percent. You know, um, it's it's all about uh, learning to get better. You know, whenever you lose, you did something wrong. But you have to understand what. And so next time, if you understand, if you accept to see yourself, understand your mistakes, then next time you, you have a good chance to do better because you're going to work on that, improve, and then you come back to it and you do better next time. You know what I learned from my, my mentor, Customato? It was like, you have to be totally objective of your feelings when you're in the ring. If that's your mother, your sister, your brother, your son, knock them out. Total control of your emotions. And that's what his thing. No feelings involved. But then you have to have feelings involved to provoke that passion. But no feeling computer, yes, just this is the job. Destroy, sophisticate, move your head, count it. You know, it's no feelings involved, just passion. Easy to say, not easy to do. <laughs> no way. It takes years and years to do. It didn't happen overnight. It's studying and training your mind. You know, people that's what that's why meditation is magnificent. It, um, it it puts you in um, a relationship with your personality, and you you become more aware of who you are and where you're going. How do you deal when she plays matches? Is not too emo you're not too emotional because I had my daughter play tennis and I, I I couldn't handle it. Listen, this is how it is. Sometimes I just go with her to let her know she has somebody there. You know, because I don't sometimes. She, she doesn't bother her because she's at this level where other parents can yell and scream and she won't be affected. But she needs to know she has support there, that nothing's going to happen to her. And that's how it is if I'm there and I work. Nothing's going to happen to her. You know, she needs that, that, um, that feeling of relief that I'm, I'm protected. All women, even men, we all need that belief that we're protected. That we're going to be all right. That's just a human nature trait. Yeah, so support and protection. Yes. And the fact that you're proud of her, she probably feels it. I don't. Do you tell her? I tell her all the time, but I, I mostly tell her that she needs to believe. And so I try to tell her the power of belief, you know. And I, so I said for that hour or so, or whatever time limit you're playing on, on the court, you have to contain your power of belief. You have to become a different, you have to become even like um, a, a mutant there. Your eyesight has to be more focused. Your hearing has to be more focused. Everything has to be at a high pitch level. You know, I've been teaching about relaxation, and now she's not as tired because being tired is a frame of mind. I know people nowadays in Mexico, the whole tribe of people, they run 100 miles a day. You know, so that tells you that being exhausted is in your mind. You can prepare your mind to go 10 hours, 20 hours. We just have to have the relationship with our inner confidence. What What do you think is important for her to succeed in order to succeed in tennis? What that we should have to do in the next years? Um, 
It's all intellectual and um, desire. You have to desire. There's nothing like the fighting heart desire. You have to want this more than you want your life. That's, that's what um, contributing is all about. You have to want this, this idea more than I want to exist. And that comes in time. It's not, she's not ready for that yet, but in time she'll understand that. And maybe, so just, just, maybe she'll compare herself with the God. You know, some people, they're so successful, they compare themselves to the God. Their confidence gets that high. You know, I wish you do it. Because it's, it's only meant for certain people to do it. Like some people have too many, too, too humble to do it. But it has to be said, the gods of war, they are God, the God of competition. They have to hear you. They have to hear your prayers. It's just like Jesus, Muhammad. It's just like the prophets of war. They have to hear you. They have to, they need your prayers. They have to bear witness that they exist. Fantastic. Um, <clears throat> Just uh, a few a few words about tennis again. What do you think? Uh, you know, we started this UTS. Uh, yeah, you know about it because you left me a great message actually about it uh, the, last summer with the idea to uh, to make tennis to propose a different tennis. You know, we keep the tennis the way it is, but we, we also propose another one that is probably more uh, uh, faster, more dynamic, uh, probably. Uh, uh, more emotional with a lighter code of conduct, more immersive with coaching, with interviews. More entertainment. More entertainment. That's what they want, the entertainment. So, I mean, tell me what you th what do you think about that because you, you you told me on a message, but I'm happy to have your uh, your your view from someone coming from uh, another sport. I just think um, what you have going on is amazing. And it's all about... Um, like I was expressing before, it's all about consistency. When I was actually, everything consistent. They're constantly moving, emotion relieves tension. And that's the best thing about sports, the constant movement, the perpetual motion of a human being. Like, you see, I was watching um, Our Planet, and I was watching these um, African wild dogs, you know, and they don't, they, they wait till you, you fall of exhaustion, they just wear you out. They never stop a slow pace, and they just wear you out till you fall down. And then they start eating you. And that's what tennis is about. Breaking somebody's spirit in order to win. You have to break his spirit. He's not giving in. And like Babe Ruth said, it's hard to beat somebody when they're trying. So and they won't quit. So you got to keep eating. Psychological. Because people don't give up. Some people are like you. They want to they'd rather die than lose. So you have to be psychological and emotionally attached to yourself. Okay, so I, I hope that next time I'll be you'll, you'll come to watch uh, some of the UTS uh, matches, and I, I hope also. I know, hey, listen, I never feel whenever your camp is open, open I come. I come the number one fan to your camp, brother. Thank you very much. That's so nice. Um, yeah.